Hi everybody, welcome to Body Awakening. In this video, we're taking the top 20 questions you guys ask us over the internet and the phones, and we're putting them today to the panel. Who we've got, we've got Jessica, who is head of nutrition at Body Awakening, key member since its founding. She's board certified in holistic nutrition. The person asking all the questions is Jerry. He's our uh, operations manager and also a board certified dietitian. So without further ado, let's get to the questions. Okay, thank you, Zachary, very much. I just have a few questions for you today. All right, let's uh, start. I want to start out and I want to ask you about what are antioxidants? If you don't mind explaining that. Sure, so to fully understand antioxidants, it's important to understand oxygen. So while all plant and animal life require oxygen, um, oxygen is also highly reactive. So it has the ability to damage the molecules around it. Antioxidants are what neutralize these reactive molecules so they don't go around damaging our cells and causing disease, ultimately. Okay. So, when, so when people ask us, like, which of our products do you recommend for that are strong in antioxidants or whatever, what do we usually say? Well, VC, of course, for one, vitamin C is a really powerful antioxidant. Um, True Greens, as well, has a lot of antioxidant capabilities. Cool. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Number two, uh, why are many of our products powdered form and not pills? The main reason for that is that they're easier to digest. So a lot of people are having impaired digestion and we can eat all the best foods and take all the best supplements, but if our body can't properly digest them and absorb them and assimilate them, they don't do us much good. So we've basically eliminated you know, some of the digestive steps um, and made them more readily available by the body. The other reason is I found from my nutrition clients that Probably 95% of the people I was working with are mildly dehydrated. So powders is kind of an easy way to get people to drink more water. Oh, that's very good. I didn't realize that. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I know like for me, because I take the True Greens and I take the probiotics every morning. So without actually having to do any real effort, I've drunk three glasses of water before I know it, because I've had one just plain water, and then I have those two. And then before I take my shower, I've already had three glasses. Wow, very nice. Good start to the day. Great start <laughs> to the day. <laughs> hydrate yourselves. <laughs> before right, you exactly. dehydrate yourself. <laughs> exactly. Um, why freeze-dry pro uh, probiotics? Why, why do you want to freeze-dry them? Yeah, you know, there's a big misconception still. I, it came up a lot many, many years ago, and I thought it would resolve itself, but it hasn't. I still get asked this question all the time. You know, don't my probiotics need to come from the fridge, and don't they have to be stored in the fridge? And the answer is no. Actually, the probiotics that are in the fridge are, um, they're live. Um, and the problem with that is when they're live bacteria, the bacteria is always dying off. Um, we also can't guarantee that how have they been handled and stored since they were manufactured? Did they get shipped and then did they get unpacked onto the sidewalk and they sat in the sun for two hours before they got loaded into a truck? We have no way to know. Um, with freeze-dried, we do know that they're shelf-stable um, until the expiration date. So basically, they're, they're much more stable and we can guarantee that the count is what it says it is. Yeah, because the, the, the issue is that you know, Jessica touched on it, but supply chains are so long. Sure. Um, and, you know, you're shipping stuff from kind of all over the world, and, you, you know, it's all third-party logistics. So you can never guarantee stability. Well, even um, more than that, you know, I, I worked in um, a, a very big natural medicine clinic, and one night the power went out. And all the probiotics in the fridge, I will say to their benefit, got given to staff. Nothing got sold, but you can't guarantee in yeah. every shop that they you know, took that out of stock. So these things yeah. do happen. And it's crazy. I mean, you can just see when you're doing, you know, when we're doing all the lab testing on the products, you can just see that, that die off happen really quickly um, with live probiotics. Wow. Once you start, start moving it around different environments, even within like a controlled room, but you're taking it in and out of fridges and you just see it really quick. But with freeze dried, it's so stable. And then once it hits that expiry date, you get the die off. But it's crazy the sort of how kind of residual or whatever the word is, but how kind of like stable it is. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, it's cool. Wow. Okay, it's good to know. So what is so special about spirulina and Coriella? 
So uh, what makes these two blue-green algae so special is their chlorophyll content. They're really, really high in chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is really healing to the body. Um, it supports liver detoxification. It helps soothe and heal the mucosal barrier of the intestinal tract. It helps to heal skin ulcers. It's good for detoxification. The list kind of goes on and on. And this, these two are just a great source of um, of chlorophyll. They're also really high in magnesium, and I know we'll get into the benefits of magnesium a little bit later, so I'll leave that, but okay, um, okay. magnesium is something that many people are, are deficient in, so we want to get more magnesium as well. Excellent. Okay. And so if someone's looking then, because, you know, we always get that question, I'm looking for spirulina and chlorella, what do you recommend? Mm -hmm. What are you going to recommend? Um, our True Greens has both of those in it, as well as a few other greens and probiotics. Um, so, yep. Good. Our cleansing kit also has it, but in the um, capsules, yeah. yeah, in the capsule. Oh, but in terms of oh. the powder and our daily use supplement range, it's oh. um, True Greens. I mean, a lot of people are kind of um, they're kind of afraid to take spirulina and acrylic because they think it tastes so awful. I think we've done a decent job in. Um, we have. I hear um, all the time that it's know, really mild, masking that flavor. And that was. Um, you know, part of our goal is I wanted something that people mm. could take without mm -hmm. like cringing to get it down. And mm -hmm. even my two very young kids will like eat it out of the bottle. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, green, I think green it's chocolate. Mild. That's green what they call it. Wow. Green chocolate. <laughs> wow. Green chocolate. I like that. That's what they call it. <laughs> Kids are going to love it. So, speaking of magnesium, how can magnesium help with sleep, stress, muscle relief, et cetera? Uh, magnesium is the anti-stress nutrient. It has the ability to calm our central nervous system. It also has the ability to relax the muscles in our body, our skeletal muscles, our heart muscle, our intestinal tract, which is a big, long muscle. Um, so it's in this way that it, it helps people to better respond to stress and to just relax and, um, and calm down, which promotes um, better sleep. Very nice. So Good yeah. for athletes? Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very good sleeper, but <laughs> if I take magnesium before I go to bed, I feel like I sleep really deep, really, really deep. When I, when I wake up, I just kind of have the sense that like, I'm fully relaxed. Nice. It's kind of crazy. Because um, I always, because obviously the magnesium product is our Mag C product, and I always kind of thought like, oh, I'd be using this more as a, as a um, like, you know, Mus muscle relaxer after vigorous sports or whatever, but actually I use it as a daily product for having a really chilled out sleep, oh, nice. going really mellow. Um, <laughs> so I like to take it 45 minutes before bed, and then you just kind of like, it's very good. <laughs> I take more than I should. I take oh, more. Okay. I'm sure I take more than I should. Um, but another thing that we hear on the, mag on the magnesium is um, some people who are suffering from um, indigestion, I mean from constipation, I only say this because we often get feedback right away, I mean Jessica could probably talk more about this, but within the second day of them taking it, we'll get an email back or sometimes a phone call or sometimes when we meet them at shows and they're like, yeah, rah, 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 you guys, you know. So. We, get, we get replies very quickly about supporting better sleep. Um, we do sometimes also hear that it's helpful for people with constipation and again it has to do with the intestinal tract being a big long muscle that when mm. we're stressed it tenses mm. up okay. um, and when we give it an opportunity to relax um, then waste can move through as it should be. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for that. Circling back to probiotics, mm. uh, why do we really need to be taking extra probiotics? <sighs> Can't we get enough from the food sources? Yeah, well, the thing with food sources is most of us don't have this culture that you know our ancestors had of fermenting food, which was one of the first ways to process food. So most of our food now doesn't contain probiotics. Um, unless you're making it at home, and if you are making it at home, that's wonderful, and you should keep doing it. Um, you still can't guarantee how much is in it, um, but the store-bought varieties of things like sauerkraut and kimchi and yogurt, oftentimes, you know, they've been pasteurized, which means the healthy bacteria has been killed off. For yogurt, again, it's been shipped around and it's sitting on a shelf, so we can't always guarantee how much live bacteria is still left in it. And then for people that are having um, digestive issues or their immune systems are really struggling, they, they may need qu quite high amounts and they're not gonna get it from food alone. 
Sure, so sure. while I definitely encourage fermenting foods at home, um, make your own sauerkraut, it's delicious and it's good for you, yep. um, many people still need more. It's so important for our fast food culture today. People are eating lots of fast food, which has probably zero probiotics. Well, not only does it have zero, um, it contains a lot of you know, antibiotics, which sure. further kills off the bacteria in our body, which Absolutely. means that we have to work even harder to replace the healthy good bacteria. Oh, good point. I mean, even in the milks and stuff, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And the cheese is, which is why you should always buy organic cheese, which we try and uh -huh. do, right? Sure. Very good. Thank you so much for that. You know, we have their product called Omega Me, yeah. and I'm just curious, what makes krill fish so special? Yes, and they are really special. Um, krill are teeny tiny little shrimp-like creatures. Mm -hmm. um, they're really special because they're so low on the food chain. This makes them very low in toxicity. So a lot of fish oils are produced from larger fish, and usually it's a combination of fish, like tuna and salmon and whatever else gets fished. Um, these bigger fish, you know, they contain more heavy metals. They've accumulated them by eating smaller fish in the ocean that ate smaller fish than them that ate smaller fish, um, where krill is really just eating algae. They're, you know, almost the bottom of the food chain. So they don't have the toxicity concern. Um, they're also really sustainable. So there is a big issue with overfishing when it comes to production of fish oil. Um, and I know we don't want to be a company that supports something that is no. bad for the ocean and bad for the world. And, you know, so we know what's, what's good for the environment is also good for our bodies. So we've gone for the most sustainable source out yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Antarctic. Um, it's, it's fished as part of that uh, Antarctic Treaty mm -hmm. System. Mm -hmm. It's also MSC certified and stuff like that. The cool thing about our one as well, um, which is you can tell if you're buying quality, and people should do this for other krill, if you flip it over the back of our bottles, it's got the GPS in the ocean of exactly where in the Antarctic the krill were harvested. Excellent. And they're, just, they're pulled up on the boat, they're kind of sucked up and then process. Wow. It's funny because it's our only animal-based product in our whole line. Wow. And, you know, me as an ex-vegan for 15 years, Jessica as a vegan for many years. It was kind of like, it was a big leap to, to take to, do, to introduce an animal product into our line. Sure. So it had to be perfect. And yeah, no. in it, I, very I'd say much. it's perfect. It's, it it's one of my secretly favorite products. It's, it's, wow. I know we had this discussion recently and you know, Omega Me is probably one of my, my favorite products as well. But there is also one other thing I forgot to mention about what makes krill so special, mm -hmm. that deep red color. It contains um, astaxanthin, oh, yes, um, yes. and this is a powerful antioxidant which huh. keeps the product stable. Nice. Um, it keeps it from oxidizing. I know we talked about antioxidants, but it also acts as an antioxidant in, in our body, protecting yeah, our cells oh, from damage. Oh, good, very good. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, why do we use animal-based omega-3 as opposed to uh, vegetarian options? Yeah, so for omega-3s, the, the most common vegetarian source is flax oil. And I love flax oil, I use it. Um, but fish oil compared to flax oil contains um, EPA and DHA. Now, flax oil, the body has to convert it into these substances, which it can do, but it does very poorly. So not much converts. So that's why, in my opinion, for people that need extra support, fish oil is really superior to a vegetarian nice. um, omega-3 like flax huh. oil. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, and I guess I should talk a little bit about why EPA and DHA. Um, it's really protective for the joints, so people that suffer a lot of inflammation and arthritis, um, this is highly beneficial. Uh, you know, it's important for our brain health, and um, for pregnant women, it's totally necessary and essential sure. because the developing fetus has to have it for um, the retina to develop properly and the central nervous to develop properly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Very important so, for brain health. Very important for brain yes. health, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, without getting too much into it, when I first, when I first became a vegan, um, the first year was fine, and then, I, and then I felt like I was lacking something. And, I, and then when I started taking the, um, the flaxseed, 
uh, uh, literally after less than a week, I then began to feel much more comfortable again. I didn't feel like I was missing something. Uh, and then I continued on my vegan journey for X amount of years later. But it was that lacking in, in, in those omega oils that kind of made me feel, you know, that I was nice. lacking something. Nice. And it was really quick, literally a couple, maybe two, three days. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's good. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, what is the relationship between detoxification and weight loss? Yes, good question. So if the body is highly toxic, and this comes from, you know, there's, there's a lot of toxins in our food, whether it's pesticides and herbicides or antibiotics um, and hormones, you know, our body, you know, wants to protect us from this stuff. And basically what it does when it enters our body, it gets drawn out of circulation and it gets stored in our fat tissues. And this is, you know, it's a pr protective mechanism by the body so that these toxins don't float around uh, making us sick and causing damage. But in return, it can cause us to hang on to weight and make it difficult to lose weight because the body doesn't want to release this stuff back into circulation. Sure, so sure. the thing with detoxification is it does give the body a chance to you know, burn through some fat stores and release these toxins. And then the key part is ultimately eliminated from the body. Excellent. That's through the kidneys, through I mean, the colon. Is that, is that kind of why we often find that people say they end up losing most of their weight after the detox, let's say like one or two weeks afterwards rather than actually during? Is that going to use it to do with it? It's part of it, yeah. It is part of it. The body's, well, for one, it doesn't just stop detoxification the minute you come off your cleanse, um, unless you come off your cleanse and start drinking beer and eating hamburgers. Which some do. <laughs> True. Um, but they hopefully pretend, not. They pretend they don't. I hope not. Um, no, most people feel really good, and they kind of keep it going for a while. But yeah, that is part of it. That is part of it. Thank you, Jessica. So speaking of cleansing, uh, <clears throat> what are some of the most common reasons or signs that our bodies need to cleanse? Okay. Um, common ones, I'd say, are, you know, headaches, a lot of digestive problems. That could be gas, bloating. Um, you know, you're starting to have a lot of food sensitivities. You find that you're reacting to a lot of things in the environment, like you get stuck in traffic, and you used to be okay, but now you know, the smog of it kind of leaves you having like a really bad headache and kind of feeling quite sick. You know, you used to be able to go out for a couple of drinks, but now like one glass of alcohol really has a strong impact on you. It's a sign that maybe the, the liver is a bit sluggish and overworked and um, the body is not neutralizing these things and eliminating them properly. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Sometimes a lot of people say the um, rapid weight gain. They often say, like, oh, I've, I've, I've gained so much weight in the last whatever it is, three weeks or yeah. whatever, or three months. Dark eyes, which I'm always guilty of. Yeah, skin, <laughs> skin eruptions, like, um, uh -huh. you know, breakouts. This is another uh -huh. symptom that uh, the body is trying to release toxins and... Body odor? Yeah, definitely. Bad breath? Bad breath, mm -hmm. white-coated tongue. Maybe fatigue. Yeah, like fatigue. the white-coated tongue thing is cool. If you wake up in the morning, you check your tongue in the mirror, right? Because you're most toxic in the morning, apparently, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's not that you're most toxic, but your body has been, you know, working part of it to detoxify overnight. And, and then if you look at your tongue, toxic. yeah, and you see how white it is, mm. um, that's, that's kind of a gauge for me. If I see that it's actually quite white, I'm always kind of like, uh, something must be going, sure, something sure. must be up. Yeah. You know. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you for that. So, um, in addition, why is it common to feel worse during your cleanse than better? Okay, I actually don't want people to feel that bad while they cleanse. Oh. Um, but, of course, there are some common symptoms of detoxification. And um, some of them can be like headaches or you feel a bit more tired. This is a sign that your body is release, releasing toxins. Um, and if those symptoms are really quite extreme and they don't go away fairly quickly within 24 hours, um, it's a sign that you need to modify your cleanse, which is easy to do because basically the body's dumping more toxins than it's able to keep up with through elimination and you want to slow it down. So detox shouldn't be a painful process. Um, occasionally it is, but if you modify appropriately in that situation, it should be fine. And like, you know, you should be able to keep up with your daily life 
um, should be able to keep exercising. Uh, yeah, and usually after you know a day or two, if you do have some mild symptoms, uh -huh. uh, you st you tend to start feeling much much better and more energized and really really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean we tend it usually tends to be the sort of if you're doing the, if people are doing the five day program, it, I guess it tends to be like day two or day three that yeah, we tend to get the emails that say that, that I kind of feel the worst and then it breaks and then they. That's right. And yeah, then you they, kind of reach a turning point. And then we get the emails on the fourth day and the fifth day where they're like, I can feel great, I can't oh, believe fantastic. it. And it's like the same person then on day two. Yes. You know, but sometimes like people will feel great the whole way through. And you never really can tell, like sometimes it's like some super healthy looking person, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. will do it and you kind of, and they end up really, you know, they end up kind of struggling on day two a little bit. Okay. Whereas someone who doesn't look healthy is like mm -hmm. cruises through and they just feel great. So you never really know. So everyone's, right. a little everyone's, a everyone's a little different. different. Everyone's exactly. an individual. And even like if I do it, I mean, I haven't done a five-day program um, in a while, probably about a year. But sometimes I'll do it and I'll cruise through it. And then sometimes, you know, it'll be a little bit, you know, difficult on the second day or the third day. I did know. it a few months ago. I felt great. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. And I really I need needed to do it. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gearing up for another. You can do it with me if you want. I just... Yeah, just not ready to give up coffee for the next five days. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, Jessica, what are some good daily detoxification supplements to take? Do you have some you recommend? I do. Um, in my opinion, the best one is True Greens. Um, again, it's that high chlorophyll content um, that really supports the liver. Um, probiotics, helping to you know eliminate waste through the intestinal tract. Um, vitamin C is another good one. Excellent. Yeah, those yeah. would probably be my top, top okay. choices. Okay, fantastic. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, what are the main elements of the Body Awakening Cleansing uh, Kit, Detoxification Kit, and what makes it so special as a program? Mm. Yes, well, there, there's nine bottles in there. Um, let's see, there's a host of things in there. There's uh, psyllium seed husks, which is a really great soluble fiber um, that has the ability to bulk up to this crazy size compared to what it is when it starts. And it kind of moves through the intestinal tract like a broom, sweeping stuff up and helping to carry it out of the body. Okay. We've got raw honey in there, which has um, you know antibacterial properties. And it's also what helps to give you a bit of energy um, during your cleanse when you're reducing calories, but you still need you know energy support for your cells. Um, there's spirulina and chlorella tablets, and we kind of touched on the many wonderful benefits of spirulina and chlorella. What I didn't mention before, and I'll mention now, is that it also has a really great amino acid profile, so it gives the body some um, support in that area, again, while you're you know, reducing the amount of food that you're eating to give the digestive system a bit of a rest. Okay, yeah. excellent, okay. I mean, the other key thing is a manual. Right? I mean, well, that's a big thing. I hope so. It took me a In year theory. to write it. <laughs> and uh, the cool thing about it, purely from a practical point of view, is you can do modifications. I mean, Jessica can talk about it now, but I mean, it's the same kit, and in the same kit, you can do three or four different cleanses. Yes. Um, that's right. And, and yeah. I always want it to be like a personalized experience that works for yes. people in their lifestyles and sure. with their personal goals. Sure. Um, so yes, I did do my best to give a number of variations. And then on top of that, I have many people who email me with questions about it. And I always help to kind of adjust further if they need. So I want people to have a good experience. I'm like nice. a true, true believer in the healing benefits of detoxification. Um, so I don't want people to like, you know, suffer through it and hate detox. I want you to come out feeling really good and feeling the benefits and having that glow on your face. Um, when nice. you finish. Nice. <laughs> and the, yeah, and the profile of people is totally varied who come to the cleanse. So there might be someone mm -hmm. who's like, oh, I can't take time off work, can I do it at work? Mm -hmm. And then the other person who's maybe like, doesn't work, they're like, I can take five days off, that's fine. Some people will take our kit and they'll go on holiday and do it there. So we kind of wanted to make it for as many people as possible. But purely from a practical point of view, the, I think the unique thing about our kit or the cool thing about our kit is you don't need to do it the day it arrives because everything's stable. Mm -hmm. You can do it you know, three months later, six months later, two days later, whatever. And once you open the bottles, 
as long as you keep it in a dry, cool place or keep it in the fridge, you can just keep using the same product until it's over. You know, it's not like, oh, I can't order it until I know that I'm ready to do it. Mm. You know, it's like, I'll That's order it and then I'll get ready. And then if a meeting comes up and go on a business trip, I can, I can wait, wait two weeks and then do it. Oh, that's know? very good. Good to know that. I uh, just got a question for you about the honey. You mentioned honey. Mm. Uh, why do we use honey as a sweetener, so to speak, rather than something like agave? Uh, what would be the advantage of honey? You know, this will also be in the probiotic products, too, like all the products we uh -huh. use, right, with honey? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not a huge fan of agave. I know it's kind of come out more recently as, like, the sugar-healthy alternative. Um, it tends to be highly processed. Um, so I, I'm not a real fan of agave. Honey, it just has such, you know, wonderful properties. It, it is naturally antibacterial. Mm -hmm. Also, when you can get honey, you know, closer to your local environment, it tends to have, like, the pollens in your environment, and this sure. can be helpful for people with allergies. Yes, yes. Okay, that's excellent. We do get a lot of uh, semi-hate emails from the vegans who would like the probiotic product, but it's got honey in it, so they need to make that call oh, if they're going to take it or not. Okay. You okay. know, we did have lengthy discussions, but in the end, like Jessica said, we made the call uh -huh. to put the honey in also because of the antibacterial stuff that it has, but we just made the call because we do get a lot of people that be like, oh, can you make that a vegan product uh -huh. rather than a vegetarian product? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I can say there's, a, there's now, it's a, it sounds like a strange alternative, but uh -huh. our baby Probiotic mm -hmm. does not have any honey. I, as an adult, sometimes take it just to have some mm -hmm. different strains of bacteria, or okay. I take it with our Probiotic Plus. So for the mm -hmm. vegans out there, um, you know, we'll it might not. You might think. Oh, we'll push gonna... to the True Greens. Yeah, the True Quite Greens. Quite often. Because yeah. that's got what ten billion in it. It has mm -hmm. ten billion healthy sure. bacteria in it. Um, probiotic Plus has twenty-five billion, mm -hmm. and the baby Probiotic also has. And 10 they're all billion. from different strains, so I actually mix and match because I use the probiotics <laughs> and the True Greens, so I'm getting like all these different strains <laughs> daily. Excellent. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Cool. Uh, you know, my favorite product is Prime. I think uh, Zachary knows yes. this very well. Mm -hmm. I love it so much, uh, and of course, it contains a, a product called L-carnitine. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, could you and probiotics as well, right? It, yes, and it yes, also has uh, three billion bacteria in it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so acetyl L-carnitine is an amino acid, mm -hmm. and it, on a cellular level, helps the body. It helps fatty acids get into the mitochondria of the cell. So, the mitochondria of the cell is where cells make energy, sure. um, and it helps it helps cells use fatty acids as an energy source. So in this sense, it's, um, you know, it's helpful for weight loss and for getting the body in a mode where it's, it's burning fat rather than, you know, say, glucose, which is you know, the usual first source of energy for uh -huh. the body. So a very important molecule, uh, yeah. amino acid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Nice. OK, thank you for that. Uh, why do we use green tea extract rather than coffee extract for our caffeine? in prime, speaking of prime. I find it's tolerated better by many people. Um, I feel that the caffeine in green tea doesn't give quite the you know, highs and lows that, that caffeine in coffee does, that it's a bit more um, stable in terms of energy release and how you feel on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and there's not, I mean, what is it? It's 45 milligrams. It so has it's about, about a half a cup of coffee, coffee in it. So in that sense, it's also slightly lower caffeine content. Or a quarter of a cup of a Starbucks coffee. Oh, there you go. Because those are pretty strong. <laughs> oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. I'll drink the Prime. I like the Prime, actually. Yeah. Um, and I've, exactly, I, don't, I find like I don't get that crash. Yeah. Yes, and I find like I don't nice. get, because if I, I mean, I like coffee, right? Um, but if I have like two cups of coffee a day, I feel that acidy kind of feeling in the stomach. Well, that's a yeah. very good yeah. point. Green tea is very alkalizing, yeah. and sure. coffee I don't, is very acidic. I totally acidic. don't feel like exactly like if I'll if I'm on prime, if I have drink prime, like if I need another pick me up, and I've already had one coffee, but I don't want to get all acidy feeling. Sure. I have the prime, I kind of feel just alkalizing. Yeah. Yeah. It tastes so good. Mm. Too. Unless <laughs> aggro. <laughs> exactly. yeah, for sure, I feel that. One of our great products, too, is Baby Probiotics Plus. Right. I think it's just a terrific product. And so the question I have for you is, why might some infants and babies need probiotics? Yeah, sometimes they do need a little extra support. Um, babies, you know, sometimes they're very uncomfortable 
their tummies hurt. Um, some babies are suffering from eczema. Uh, in these situations, probiotics are really useful. You know, we, you don't see it as often, but sometimes babies also suffer constipation. How long did your sister's baby, right? How, nine days without going to the bathroom. We laugh, but it's so not funny. I mean, it's, it's quite, you know, the body needs to be eliminating. And you can imagine how uncomfortable a baby would feel. But as soon as she gave her son probiotics, he, he was going to the bathroom. Um, you know, sometimes during the birthing process, if mom is required to be on antibiotics, this affects the baby as well. Um, yeah, so there, there are certain situations, kind of, you know, a baby comes into the world, their digestive tract is sterile. They get um, their healthy bacteria from mom, but if mom had an antibiotic or mom had a cesarean, they're not exposed to that first flush of, of bacteria that they need, and that can kind of set them up for, you know, some, some problems in those first months of life. Okay, okay, excellent. Okay, Jessica, what is the best time of day to take supplements? What do you recommend? It really depends on the supplement. Okay. Um, and it depends yeah, we on get the person. this question quite a lot. Okay. It Definitely. depends on the person. So, okay, the best time is when, number one, when do you remember to take it? Okay. So, the main thing is that you take it. Um, uh -huh. Outside of that, my general recommendations are, and I can tell you what I do true greens and probiotics, I take first thing every morning. Okay. Um, Omega Me, I take with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Uh, Maxi, I recommend, and I also like it most before bed because it is uh -huh. so helpful for sleep. But sure. for that one, um, between meals is fine. So, mm -hmm. for someone who doesn't like to take it before bed or can't remember to take it before bed, um, um, that's the one I, I suggest really to take away from food. Most of mm -hmm. the others you mm -hmm. can take with or without food. Vitamin C, mm -hmm. the VC, I'll, I'll also take with, with most meals, mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Excellent. Okay. You answered my next question. I was going to ask you what supplements do you take on a daily oh, well, basis? There you go. <laughs> I take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're We're addicted. Addicted. <laughs> so just a couple more questions for you, Jessica. Why should we want to alkalize our body? What's the, the yeah, goal there? Well, the thing is that it's, there's a few reasons. Disease really arises in a slightly acidic body and the body will work really, really hard to maintain this slight alkaline state. Mm -hmm. So if we live a lifestyle and eat foods that really push us towards being acidic, that's like a very stressful, uh, lifestyle that's eating a lot of fried foods and drinking a lot of alcohol and eating a lot of sugar and chemicals. Um, the body is going to do everything it can to bring us back towards alkalinity. And often what it does is it pulls minerals from our bones. It pulls calcium sure. from our bones to Absolutely. alkalize the body. And long term, that's a really um, risky situation. You know, as you get older, you don't want to have osteoporosis. Sure, um, sure. But aside from making the body work really hard to balance, um, yes, if we are acidic, you know, heart disease and cancer and any number of disease um, mm -hmm. is more likely to, mm -hmm. to take foot and kind mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. start setting itself into motion. Okay, thank you for that. So what food supplements are good for alkalizing the body? What would you say? Uh, greens. So greens. in terms of eating and supplements, anything uh -huh. green, lots of fresh uh, fruits and vegetables, uh -huh. um, green powders, these are going to be your, you know, your best bet. So true greens would be a great source. Absolutely. Oh, and that's part of the reason why I start with it every morning. Very alkalize nice. the body after uh -huh. sleeping. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes I'll do, I'll do it in the morning, and sometimes I'll do it at night if I kind of feel like I had an acidy day. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, Jessica, that's all the questions that I had today. Wow. Thank, and you. thank you so, so much. much for all your... There you have it, the top 20 questions you guys ask us. Hopefully it was informative and interesting. Thank you to the panel, thank Jessica. Thank you to Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Feel free to email us. Bye-bye.